Okay, so you've threaded your halo machine and you're about to switch the power on for the first time. There's a couple of things you may need to do and um, it's really, really simple. But uh, the first thing is you do need to select the language that you plan to, to use and obviously in Australia that's most likely going to be English. The machine may come out of the box set up with Chinese. Don't panic when you see the Chinese characters there. No big deal. Just hit the little plus uh, tick button there. The machine will go through a couple of little processes. It will want to set its hoop position. But we're going to change the language right now. It's very, very simple. All you need to do is go into the settings screen right here. And you'll see there's a little box with some flags in it. Click on the flag box there and choose your preferred language. I'm choosing English, obviously. And that's all there is to changing the language setting. And um, the machine is now pretty much ready to dive into and have a look at how you would load a design. And that's the first thing we're going to do here. I have already loaded a design on here, but in, in almost every case, you're going to take a design from a USB stick to, to load. And the format you're going to use on this machine will be DST. It's a very common format and um, almost all software in the market will convert to that format and all, almost all designs will be available as a DST file. Now, I'm going to load a USB stick that I have a design on and we'll just pop that in the side here. Put it in the right way, of course, helps. There we go. Just give it a moment or two for that USB stick to read. Now, you will notice that this little button here with the needle and an up down arrow is red. That means the machine is currently in an edit mode. It is not in embroidery mode. That would need to be blue to be an embroidery mode. You will see I already still have a design in memory here, but that's ir irrelevant as long as that button is red. In order to load a design from the USB stick, all I need to do is to click on the little folder button just here. And this manages your designs. And you'll see I do currently have two designs in the memory, one of them that I have just recently taken off the USB stick. What I am going to do here right now is I'm going to delete this one. If I double click on it, I have an option to delete it. And I'm deleting that from the machine's memory. And I did that just so I can show you how we bring a design from a USB stick. You'll notice down across this menu here, there is a little USB symbol uh, that looks like a USB. Just click on that button and it will now read the USB. It's showing me there are two designs on this USB stick and a folder with some other information. I want to pull in this design here, the Echidna Sewing logo, so I'm just going to grab that. It has now got a little red arrow, uh, sorry, a little red box around the, the design I just selected. And in order for me to take that from the USB stick and save it to the memory on the machine, I just need to hit the green button down the bottom here. So we hit that. It will now automatically choose the next available number in the machine's internal memory bank. And that is, in fact, right here. It's telling me number two. And I'm happy with that, but I could select any number I wish, but usually just take the default that comes uh, when you load the uh, USB. And we just click the little green arrow there. So once you've done that, um, all I need to do now is exit my USB menu. So I hit the little exit, exit button there, and it is now back looking at the screen, the machine's memory. And you can see I do have one, two designs there again. The design I deleted just a moment ago, I've actually put back in, and it is in position number two. This has an incredibly high memory. You can keep loads and loads and loads of designs on this machine. I now want to select design number two to stitch it. So I just hit the, uh, hit the design I want. Again, I just hit the green button down here and that will now take me to a kind of an edit screen where I can rotate the design. I can uh, either, either by 90 degree increments or I can set a specific rotation angle. I can scale it slightly. I don't recommend scaling. On the machine, you're far better off scaling designs on your software. Um, and of course, there is some other uh, key functions there. Rarely will you use these. They're really a bit of information and ability to, to set repeats up and so on. But that will be covered in, in another future video. Right now, though, I'm happy with the, the orientation it's on. I don't need to rotate it. Hit the little green button. And we are now in a, a little bit more of an edit screen. The good thing about this particular option now is I can set my colors. Now, I know this design I want to stitch with black and red. It is a DST file, and DST files don't carry a lot of color information. So you uh, just disregard what colors show on the screen. It's kind of irrelevant. But in order to change or select the colors that I want to use, 
all I need to do is click on the color palette on the side here and it will now give me an option to change my colors. There are two color stops in this design, one and two. The first color I happen to know is going to be red and I happen to also know that red is on needle six on my machine. It's irrelevant what the screen tells me at this stage and I will cover, I will cover setting your own color palettes in future videos. But right now, I know that the first color I want to sew is on needle six and the second color is actually black, which is on needle seven. So the first color is selected, which is color, color stop one, and I want to use needle six. Now, it's now showing green, but that's because I haven't set my palette um, on my machine. And this is something when you get into industrial machines that you rarely ever do. You just simply use, use your eyes and you look at what colors you want on what needle and that's what you're going to select. I do know that I've chosen needle six for my first color and I want needle seven for my second color. Again, it's irrelevant what colors show here. It's what's on the machine on those needles that is important. Once I've got the colors selected, we just click OK. And um, at this point, that design is now ready to sew. To take it to the next step, I would just simply hit the little red button there and it will now say change to drive mode. In other words, it's ready to go. So to, to go to drive mode, just hit the green tick and it will now save the pattern to the file. To do this, it's now going to show the design on screen in a kind of a ghosted look and ready, ready to stitch. So next up, we'll take a look at how we load the hoop and how we position the design. Okay, so we have loaded a design and uh, we're wanting to stitch something out now. Of course, our machine is threaded and we've covered this in a, uh, a separate video, both the needle threading down through here and the bobbin threading. All that's left to do now is select the hoop and position the design and start stitching. Now I am going to be, first of all, adjusting the little laser pointer. This has an LED pointer that will point to exactly where the needle drop point is. Now it may not be set straight out of the box. You may need to adjust this. It is turned on by this little button just up here. Once we turn that on, and I'll just move this little laser pointer around, you'll see, hopefully camera guy, will see there's a little red dot just on the needle plate there. That dot needs to be positioned right on the needle hole. And you do that by just simply gently moving this little movable laser pointer here. And I can tell you now that is pointed directly to the needle hole. Now we will load the hoop. I'm using one of the standard hoops that comes with the machine. This is hoop number four, and it is a 190 by 190 hoop. I think it gives you an embroidery area of 170 by 170, or 170 diameter. And we just simply push this into the arms like that. Just make sure that you hook up the little clamps there, slide it in and make sure that it is positively engaged. You will now be able to see the laser pointer is uh, pointing to is approximately where the needle drop point is. It's not millimeter perfect, but it's very close and it will give you a really great indication as to where the design will be stitching. In order to position the design, if I just if I just wanted it to stitch exactly in the middle of that piece of fabric, I wouldn't need to change anything. But if I did want to move the design around, I can go to the move function here, which is the center button along the, the bottom of the screen. And that will now show me whatever hoop I have selected, providing I have selected the, the correct one. To select the hoop you're about to use, you go to the bottom left icon. And as I mentioned, this was hoop number four, and this is very handy. The hoops are actually numbered, so we just simply take number four and hit the green button. The machine will now ask you, did you want to set the frame origin now? Say yes. It will now reposition the, the hoop, and it will tell you, or it will prevent you from uh, stitching the design, whereas it might run into the hoop, which is very, very handy. You can see this, uh, there is the design in reference to the embroidery area within this hoop. If I did want to move the design around, it is just a case of moving these arrows and the design will move accordingly. You have two speeds. This is the double little red arrows in the center there is, is move it quite quickly turn it to one and it's a, a very fine movement and you can more precisely place your design. If I wanted the design to be back in the center of the hoop, I'm just going to hit that button there. I'm happy to stitch that where it is. Now that I've done that, all I've got to do is escape out of the that screen there. This button is blue, so I'm ready to go. And there is one more important feature here if we're using the automation on it. In other words, whoops, cancel that, sorry. 
this little button here, two needles with an arrow pointing to them. There are three settings here. There is an automatic with a needle, uh, an arrow between the two needles and an arrow going up and down. That is fully automatic. When you hit the go button, it will choose the needle that you have selected or previously selected uh, when setting up the design and it will automatically move to that and automatically start sewing. If you change it to just the small red arrow between the two needles, it will automatically select the, the next color, but it will stop and wait for you to hit the go button. Or if you want to control your needle and just choose whatever needle you want on the, on the run, you just change it to a manual setting. And uh, at that point, you could choose the needle uh, selection button and then you could move to any of the 12 needles independently and that's what it will stitch. It will stitch whatever needle you have selected. But that's not what we want to do. We want to go to automatic because I told it to use needles 6 and 7. Once that's done, we're good to go. All that we have to do now, um, oh, before I do that, I should just quickly show you, you can also trace the design. If you're not sure where it's going to stitch, go back into the move function and hit this little button here and it will trace a perimeter of the design. And the LED pointer at this point is very handy because you can see where it's going to stitch. So well, I'm happy with where it's going to stitch, so we'll just get out of that. All I've got to do is hit the green button, the start button, and we're good to go. I generally turn my LED pointer off at that stage. I should point out, if ever you, you have an inadvertent thread that you don't particularly want, it's a good idea to stop and just get rid of that because we don't want that stitched in anywhere. We'll just move that out the way and we're good to go. So let's just hit the start button. So that's now completed sewing. All that's left to do is to take the hoop out of the machine, which of course just simply slides out by pushing this up. That's all done. Don't need that bit of thread there. And in order to relieve or, or take the design out of the, um, the sew mode or the, um, the stitching mode, just hit that blue button and it will say change to edit mode. So if we hit the green tick, it is now back in edit mode. And if you, you can't run the machine now, if you hit the start button, it will say there's nothing there to run. So it's kind of good idea to take the design out of drive mode, put it back into edit mode when you're completed, just so as you don't accidentally make any mistakes. And that's it. That's as simple as it is to loading a design from USB and stitching it um, very, very quickly. Thank you.